Hello and welcome back to Educator.com. Today's lecture is going to be on DNA replication. As an overview, we're going to talk about the eukaryotic cell cycle once again, uh, and we are going to focus on S phase because that's where DNA synthesis occurs. <clears throat> we'll talk about our major players, so that will be how we recognize the origins. We'll talk about how strand separation occurs. Removing supercoils, as well as why we need to remove supercoils. We will then go over the big part of the actual DNA synthesis. And finally, we will go over the final processing. Um, and then we will talk about telomeres and the end replication problem. So, the eukaryotic cell cycle, once again. Okay. So, G1, remember that's just our growth phase. Um, that's going to be about 9 to 11 hours long. <clears throat> S phase, which is what we're going to focus on in this unit. That's where DNA replication occurs. right? That usually takes about 8 to 12 hours. G2 phase, uh, another growth phase is about two to four hours. And then mitosis is about one hour. And so the normal human cell uh, will divide on average about every 24 hours. And G1 is going to be the most variable timing of that stage. Um, but today, as I said, we're talking about DNA replication. So we're going to focus on S phase. Now, we can't talk about DNA replication without talking about Watson and Crick. Now, remember back from the second unit that we talked about Watson and Crick as being the gentleman who discovered the uh, structure of DNA. So they published a one-page paper to the Nature of Journal in 1953, and in their journal, they said that, hey, there is this molecule, DNA, that we all know about, but it actually has specific base pairing that suggests a possible copying mechanism. Now, this is important because at the time, remember, protein was thought of as being the genetic material because DNA, they didn't see any type of copying mechanism because at the time, DNA looked as a tetranucleotide with the bases coming off on the ends, the phosphate backbone being in the middle, right? So this would be the phosphate backbone. And this would be a planar structure. So you'd have a tetranucleotide here, then so on and so forth. And it just didn't have a way that you could replicate DNA. So Watson and Crick's paper um, using Rosalind Franklin's data without her permission um, was what allowed everyone to start thinking about this differently. Because remember, now what DNA looks like is this with the phosphate backbone on the outside and the DNA base pairs in the middle. All right. 